Hey everyone, welcome to the tenth episode of Games I Speak. I'm Gio, and I'm Josie. And today we have uh, some cool stuff to cover. Yeah, uh, mainly the Final Fantasy VII demo. Oh my uh, God, Final Fantasy VII Trump remake. Demo. Remake. I. I it's just annoying to say. You gotta remake. say remake. <laughs> you gotta say it. Okay, Final Fantasy VII remake demo dropped this week. We both played it. Yes. Um, I actually put my playthrough on uh, YouTube. So link below. I'll, yeah, I'll link below. Um, so yeah, let's uh, jump into that because there's some interesting things going on there, especially with the combat system. Mm. Um, so here we have this um, blog by Square Enix where they just kind of go into depth about some of the changes with the uh, combat. Yes. So uh, off the top of your head, what did you find that was one of the biggest changes um, to the game? Oh, I think that the, one of the biggest changes is that the the speed of combat the speed of combat is the uh, is pretty big because now it's like all real time mm -hmm. for the most part um i didn't play in classic mode so i actually haven't tried classic mode i did okay okay so you um, can still take the reins anytime you want excellent so excellent. classic mode is actually probably what i'll pick oh really yeah because if i'm at a point where uh i'm just like being lazy i, <laughs> I can just let it do its thing but at any moment you press the buttons, it responds like that. So it's really, you're getting two modes for one. So here's the thing, because as soon as I finished playing the demo, I instantly went back to Final Fantasy VII OG because I purchased it on the PS4 like ages ago. And I was like, yeah, I want to re replay this game. So now I'm like replaying Final Fantasy VII OG. And uh, I love the, the fact that you can have a boost mode, so you can actually speed it up by three times, okay, which is very cool. But... The biggest issue that I foresee uh, uh, in, com in comparison to both games is random encounters. Yes. Random encounters. You, you, you can encounter as many enemies as like you're, you're wandering in a location, yeah. especially in the Shinra plant. Yeah. And like it's, it's constant. Like, yes. It's a lot. Like you, you notice it. Yeah. And here, when you're doing it in the remake, it's just like, okay, well, this is the planned encounter that we have at this exact moment, and then enemies will appear, and they mm -hmm. appear in, in, in the world. You, you don't get, like, sucked into a different... Um, An instance or something. Exactly. Yeah. Like a battle map. And so that's, I think, a big difference, especially in terms of power levels, because I realized it as I was fighting the Scorpion boss. I was like, oh, I'm not as... Uh, this is kind of, like, a little bit more challenging, because I can only fight however many enemies they allowed me to fight. Yes, yeah. And you know you that that means that you're you're uh, prohibited from like over leveling. Do you so uh, were, uh, the, uh, at least at least in this instance? Do you think they completely took out random encounters? Because I felt like I hit a random encounter at one point. Where? When? I don't uh, even remember. When I was when I was uh, in the courtyard, kind of like outside before you hit the factory. I was moving forward. I wiped out everything. But then all of a sudden there was two enemies behind me, and I didn't even see them. And I was like, "Is this that dro dropping off of the train?" Uh, yeah, no. This is like, I would say like fifteen minutes in, um, mm. before you get to the Shin maybe, Shinra plant. Maybe this deserves further inspection. Yeah, because I they just appeared behind me. I didn't see them when I I walked down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I saw the planned encounter, killed them. Then I was running around in a circle looking for boxes. Yes. And then two guys appeared behind me. Gotcha. So I just chalked that up to a random encounter because I was like, oh, is this a random encounter? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So maybe it's still there. I don't know. Okay. But well, you're right. We'd have to investigate yeah, that further. I didn't, I didn't download or I didn't play the demo again. So, but I do, love, I do love the smoothness of combat. I like the strategy behind the combat. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's not so button mashy, especially since like, you know, you can go ahead and press one button to uh, to actually attack and then press and hold it to for have a different type of attack. Yeah. And then the different modes, uh, the Punisher or the, what was the other mode for, for Cloud? Uh, it starts it, with an O. It, but, but that was the balance mode. I yes. can't remember the name, but it was yeah. a balance mode. Yeah, balance mode and Punisher mode and then Barrett with his uh, overcharging. I love that. Yeah. That was tight. And, and it's, it's really uh, convenient how you can switch between the different characters in your party. Yes. Which makes things easier because, like, with Barrett, um, they were really showing off, like, hey, look, you're going to need to play a ranged character sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
and you're going to need to play a melee character sometime. Especially Depen according yeah. to enemy placement. Yeah. Because there were some enemies that were too far away, like when the scorpion boss jumped uh, towards the, the wall. Yeah, and in, in this version of the game, there's no way for Cloud to hit him. So yes. you have to switch. So mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. That is very cool. It's a situational awareness. How did that play in classic mode? Uh, so Barrett just does... Is it just, it just pauses everything? No, 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 no. Okay. It's all real time. Oh, but okay. if I let go of the controls, then he'll he'll just do his thing. But if I pick up the controls, I take control. So it really I played I I picked classic mode, mm. but I was really playing the normal mode. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that it yeah, I mean it's a two modes for one. Did you have anything that you didn't like from the demo? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh I can tell you right now. <laughs> I did not like the because I mean I understand that Cloud's the main character, but I did not like having to like play it uh, because I enjoyed playing as Barrett. I love Barrett. Barrett's like one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. I want to just keep traversing the world with Barrett. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like I'm like I'm like fighting as Barrett, he is and hilarious. then you get forced towards Cloud, yeah. and it's like damn it. <laughs> yeah, so you didn't like that. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish I can go ahead and choose what main character I want to peruse the world with. Yeah, you yeah. know, and then what whatever story beats happen the way they happen, but. If I wanted to play as Barrett, uh, leading my characters, especially when it comes to Tifa, when she comes along, oh my gosh, I want to I want to play as her yeah. more predominantly. Especially, the, you know, we talked about this before. I love brawler characters. Yes. So I'm I'm most excited to looking at how she plays as well as Red Thirteen. Yeah. No. Uh, I think Red Thirteen was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Red Thirteen. Red, he's a badass. He got a little weak later on in the game. I noticed it, because he just couldn't equip like crazy overpowered stuff like all the material in the world <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly um but um so yeah no uh i no i think that's a good idea idea as well but you can tell the story is kind of forcing you to play as cloud because you're seeing yes. it through his eyes yes one thing that i did love that you know you you kind of take for granted from playing the older school rpgs is there's a lot inferred and now everything's kind of more explicit in terms of how Cloud acts. Like, there's a lot of unintentional humor, I believe. Yeah. Seeing how Cloud... Because, like, when I first saw it in terms of Cloud, like, dissing Barrett, like, like, like you know, whatever, like, you read that, you don't get any kind of facial emotion. These are just, like, little polygonal characters. Yeah. And you're like, this dude's an ass. And then yeah. here, here you're like, okay, you he's really, it. he's really indifferent. There's a little yeah. bit more nuance yeah. to the character and how they're reacting yeah. to certain moments and how they're emoting, you know, whatever they're saying. So I really enjoyed that. That's yeah. something that I didn't really put too much thought into. Yeah, he uh, he definitely came across as <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just here, st standoffish. You need me. I don't need you. So how and did Barrett you was super <laughs> pissed at Cloud, man. <laughs> Barrett did not like Cloud. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Riggs. I'm kidding. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think leave the weapon here. <laughs> yeah. With Cloud and Barrett. So what did you think about uh, the voice acting? I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I loved it. I'm on board. It, I mean, it just, it felt right. Yeah. It felt right. I, I, there, there was no moment where I was like, ugh. And I've been, it's funny that you say that because I was watching this anime uh, called Code Geass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I usually like dubs. I'm sorry, subs. I'm subs over dubs. And then yeah, I like I was suck. eating. I was eating and I was like, I, I can't read and eat at the same time. So I put on the dubs and I was like, ugh. Yeah. Like, ugh. It just took me out of the anime. Yeah. It took me out of the feeling of it. And uh, there's a lot of times where there's the the English equivalent of the voice actor tries to emulate the tone of the Japanese voice actor and it doesn't translate as well not as well uh, sometimes it's, it's, it does it's, it's, sometimes it does but sometimes I'm, ta I'm talking does. specifically about yeah. like high-pitched females oh yeah 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 sometimes it doesn't translate that well because there's certain words in Japanese that just have that sound mm. like that sing-songy sound and you don't get that in oh, yeah. English yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when a, when a when a Japanese girl goes nani, like <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that in in, in the English translation. But I, I I had no issues with the voice acting. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah. And I mean, like I I remember the characters from Advent Children. I, I like the voice acting in in mm -hmm. Advent Children. The translation kind of iffy, mm -hmm. but the voice acting was good. Yeah, so you can read some Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I think 
I think they're going all out here. Yes. Um, I do like that it's in English, yes. but I would like to see an option. There should be. Japanese they did this, voices. They did Final with, Fantasy yeah, 15. Yeah. So if, as long as they have that option, you can pick what you want. That mm-hmm. I th- I'm go- good with that. Now, what do you think about, uh, like, what are your reservations going forward in terms of the episodic nature of the series? Now that you've gotten a taste of just that initial mm-hmm. bombing run from the, the Shinra plant, like, do you feel like, yes, the episodic nature is necessary? Mm-hmm. Or do you feel like, hmm, what are they, do- what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. Do you have questions? So in uh, I do. Yeah, this demo was very linear. Mm, mm-hmm. You couldn't, they blocked your, you from leaving the zone, because I tried to leave the zone a few times. And, yes. And um, the female character. Jesse. Jesse, she was like, hey, where are you going? We got to be over here. <laughs> and, and you were forced to come back. Um, She's kind of thirsty, that's why. Yes, <laughs> she does have a love interest in Cloud, yeah, and she I mean, did ask but, him about. But who didn't? Yeah, who didn't? She, when he get, when he when he gives that little smirk after like jumping from the breaking the the, the bridge that's breaking yeah, underneath yeah. them, and he jumps up and she's like, "Okay, that was cool." Yeah, and like you got that little bit of emotion. Yeah, there was nothing said, just him. Just yeah, that was amazing. I was like, "Oh my yeah, god!" That's, that's that leads to the nuance yeah. the situation. But go on, sorry. And she also asked him about Tifa. She's yeah. like, you remember she was like, is there Are anything you all... going? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I want to see it open world. Uh, not open world, open world like like Dark Souls, mm. but open enough where you can explore. I want an exploration. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. <sighs> that, Especially that... if they're cordoning off these, uh, n- not just the story, but also zones. Yeah. Like... There's a reason why we don't, we don't go back to Midgar after we leave Midgar in the original in yeah. the original game for a while. Yeah, and uh, you but know, you're allowed to traverse the map. Yes, you, yes, you know. So I think as long as they have that, and they leave enough open for side quests and talking to uh, town people and investigating things, mm-hmm. then I'll be satisfied. Mm. But if they keep it linear, like let's say uh, Final Fantasy um, fifteen. Yeah. Or it, you th- you're thinking 13, how linear that was. Yes. And 10. Then uh, especially 10, because they had a lot of issues with the with development on the uh, PS3. And so they you had... PS2. PS2. 10 was PS2. Uh, no, no. I'm thinking of X2. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, I, I remember... And, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong. You can look this up. But I remember when they made that game... Mm. Because it was for PS3 and it was a whole new platform. X2 is PS2. Is it? Yeah. Damn. That was this. That was a sequel to 10. Maybe I'm thinking of PS3, a different game. PS3, Xbox. Uh, sorry, Xbox. Ps3, Final Fantasy 13 was the first one. Okay, on maybe the I PS3. am thinking Final of Fantasy 13. 12 was the last one on the PS2. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of 13. Okay. Because because it was li- it was very linear. So okay, I, you're, I you're am. The, thi- yeah. Yes. It, was, it was very corridor heavy. Okay. Yes. So I am thinking of 13 now. Mm-hmm. Um. The, it was the way that the engine was. That uh, it was a gorgeous game. It was a gorgeous game, but I remember reading at the time. I was like, I was playing the game, and it just did not feel like a Final Fantasy game to me. And mm-hmm. I remember reading that they were having issues with the engine, and because of that, they had to make it more linear. Mm, okay. Yeah. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm totally making this up. <laughs> Well, but, um, see, that you can me, look it up and correct me in the comments because we I'm spoke wrong. about this last time in terms of like, are they milking people by splitting this story up, and in 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 like, or is it an issue uh, in terms of the development side of things? And I and I I was I'm optimistic. More toward, I was optimistic yeah. in terms of the whole development side of things, but also I'm saying that I think that there is an issue with Square Enix in terms of optimizing development, and and to think that this game can't can't like can't be re- remade into one full game i think you don't is, think that's true i don't think that's true or maybe it's not a hundred percent true maybe it's not yeah. as cut and dry as we yeah. think it is but but it's definitely possible especially especially since i think you said it last time that you're probably you're not gonna wait completely but you're like why not wait until the play- playstation 5 all in one edition yes when it's all complete because you know For this is just a the, piece of it yes for people on the fence people that might not have a lot of money to spend mm-hmm. and might <laughs> want to get 
the just the best version of the game mm-hmm. and aren't making content. See, we're we're doing a show here. We have to be on top of things. We're doing a show. Yeah. <laughs> And I make content, so for me, it's like I'm kind of like I kind of have to get it right. Yeah, you know, it's 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 hot. It's something that yeah. people want to talk about, and we want to we want to talk about yeah. it too. I mean, we're excited, we're fans. Yeah, but if I wasn't, if I wasn't doing this, and you just said to me, "Hey, um, this is the first part of yes. a, 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 of a game being remade from a game previous that was that spanned three discs," then I would wait. I'm just telling you guys right now, I would wait. So I. It's tough. It's tough. Um, but you want to kind of be in on the the zeitgeist of it when it happens. Because mm-hmm. you know all these people are going to be on Twitter. They're going to be on YouTube. They're going to be talking about it. It's going to be the hot thing when it drops. And if you're going to wait how many years? We don't even know how many years. Let's, that's, that's a big problem. Let's just be... Um, Let's be uh, optimistic and say it's three years. Because it's gonna. We're, we're looking at possibly three parts, right? <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, let's be optimistic. Three years mm-hmm. for three parts, and then let's just say four years for the total package, right? Um, <laughs> that's a long time. This is a three hundred gigabyte yeah. game. <laughs> it's that, like, come on, that's a long. I mean, time. when you have games like Red Dead Redemption two, and you have Skyrim, massive games, massive games with a shit <laughs> ton of content. Yeah, like I just don't see why yeah. this game is so huge like I, I can only assume poor optimization that's all i can assume like, like, like they're using uncompressed audio <laughs> you know what i mean they're using red book audio <laughs> that's what like they're using. what is going on yeah, i mean I oh we can talk about that though the soundtrack oh oh my god <laughs> my ears were being assaulted with the most beautiful sound yeah it was beautiful oh it, it was, was so good it was great so uh just I don't the know menu if, alone i was like getting nostalgia feeling uh, yeah hell yeah you, I, so i don't know if you noticed this currently it's on back order or uh, or their limited supply but they're re-release they're releasing the final fantasy 7 remake soundtrack on vinyl like four Ooh, vinyl discs nice. or is it two vinyl discs i think it's two Double-sided, obviously. It's on back order. And uh, yeah, it's on back order, but it's available at the Square Enix site and on Amazon.com for seventy-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like that. I want. I want to order it. I like. I'm kind of excited for yeah. it, especially since the music just sounds so damn good. Oh my it does gosh. sound good. It does sound good. Um, it just. I mean, they s- don't break something that is not broken. Just keep the music. You know what yeah. I mean? If they want to update it, make it a little bit more modern. That's fine, but don't. Don't change it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't change but, it too but much. We'll see more about Final Fantasy VII when it releases in April yeah. 10th. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would recommend everyone who has a PS4. Yeah. Download, the, download demo. the demo. Did you have any issues with the demo? Because you're on the OG PS4. Yeah. Did you have any issues? I, I mean, I had the PS4 Pro and yeah. I, I had none. Zero issues. Rock on. That's cool. Everything That's good. Loaded that is optimized quickly. against uh, those, those yeah. different generations. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I love the demo. You love the demo. Yes. Um, so, I think... But 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 it does it does bring up questions yeah, it as does bring to up as to the the length of time that we're going to be spending in Midgar, especially for this first part, yeah. and the rest of the game. Like, well, what okay. the hell are they going to do? I know we briefly talked about the classic mode and the normal mode. Mm. What did you think about how the combat is set up, where you can quickly? Uh, hit X mm. and and a little sub menu comes up with all your items and everything slows down. Yeah, what did you think about that? Do you think that, that was brilliant? I think so too. Yeah, because I they it, did that well. it, it 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 plays again into what I was talking about earlier about the strategy of choosing what you want. Now, my only it's not so much of an issue. Mm. What? So I'm thinking Final Fantasy 15. You can spam items. Yeah. Here you can't spam items. No. You have to wait until your uh your ATB gauge. Yeah, the blue gauge. Yes. You have to wait till it reaches because I forget they ha- they have a different name for it here. Yes. But but it, it's a, it's a, it's an action gauge. You have to wait till you have at least one bar. Exactly. Yeah. In order to do anything. Yes. Uh in terms of uh special movement. I like I do like how the limit breaks from back like Braver are now abilities. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I didn't do the cross slash. I actually I beat I beat the demo and I didn't have like the cross slash ability never opened up for me. Did it open up for you? Um, because it's available in the demo. It did. 
Nice. I did it. Nice. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I didn't get. I to think do you it. have to have a certain amount of uh, gauge or whatever. To yeah. Do that. No, I, I I never got to do it. Yeah, because there was part in the tutorial where it was like, oh, uh, when you reach this level, mm. it'll open up the limit breaker or whatever. Gotcha. Okay. okay. And so I and maybe I was maybe maybe I was too connected uh, to to Barrett. I was loving Barrett so much. Yeah. You. That's probably why you yeah. were playing Barrett because it happened during the boss fight. Yeah. It opened. I was up like, for me. I'll let Cloud do his own yeah. thing. <laughs> And I switched the cloud, but I was like, nah, I'm feeling Barrett more. Yeah. It was like, brrr, ju -ju, ju -ju, <laughs> and then the overcharge, man, that overcharge was, it felt good. It did That's feel another good. thing. Yeah. Uh, the hits, the the feedback, the just the, not only the, the visual feedback, but also the feeling of it yeah. in terms of the, um, the vibration function. Yeah. It felt good. It did feel it good. It felt good. Yeah. There was weight to each of uh, Cloud's moves. No, and there were. There were, especially when he like everyone's came movements. down with the sword. Yes. You could feel it. And then when he went into the uh, Punisher mode, mm -hmm. and like he could barely move, but he, <laughs> once yeah. you got close to the enemy, it was like... Doo, 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 Don't doo. talk about the logistics of Cloud holding his own sword. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because that sword is insanely large, but still. Yeah. It was It, no, was, it, it felt was great. great. No. It was great. Um, so uh, next up, we have some news about the PS5. It's not direct news, but mm. it's news nonetheless. So let's pull this up. So can you explain... Um, What's going? Well, first of all, tell me what you heard. Uh, so I heard that uh, at this at this event, AMD went ahead and said, and this is all I really heard, that these these systems will be coming out in 2020. Yes, this is something that we talked about last week in terms of with the the issue with COVID 19 pushing back a lot of manufacturing back. Yeah, that the PS5 and the Xbox One Series X. Is it called the Xbox One Series X or just or Xbox, Xbox, Xbox Series, Series X. X? Jeez, Louise. Okay, I know. One <laughs> Series X is a mouthful. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and uh, that the, the the manufacturing and everything that's coming out of China in general, there's going to be delays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but AMD says that it's going to happen, but to pre-order practically, you know, Instantly. on the jump Instantly. because. If anything, if you recall the PlayStation 4 when it first came out, and the PlayStation 3 or any system in general, any system, there's, there's going to be you know, the, 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 the initial wave, everyone's going to jump on it, and then there's going to be a lack of systems available, and the secondhand market shoots up like crazy. And let's not even discuss the Switch. Because no. that was a disaster. Oh, yes. That was a disaster. They, did not, they, they weren't able to meet demand. But that's, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Um, this one... It's not an artificial short uh, shortage. No, no, no. no this no. is it's going it's going to happen regardless because yeah. of the situation that's and, going on now. And I've pointed this out to you many times. Mm -hmm. As the world population increases, mm. uh, just getting raw resources is getting harder and harder. Mm. And so. In our lifetime, we're going to see a, sh a shortage of almost everything across the board, and so it's going to logistics are hugely important now. Um, and and these companies, they got to be careful because you could come out with something amazing, people want it, but you can't get this one chip, or you you know what I mean. Yes. So he, you're right, and we're going to see it happening, especially with collector's editions. Oh, I mean, it's already happening. It's already I happening. Mean, you can tell right now, just uh, Resident Evil 3, perfect example, where it's like collector's, uh, collector's edition pre-orders went like that. And you, if you weren't there on the jump and you were able to get one, you're screwed and you have to go to the second-hand market where they double the price of it. Immediately. Immediately. Um, and that and that's, another, that's another thing. There's <laughs> a lot of greedy people out there that are taking advantage of the situation yeah. because there are limits to what can be pre-ordered. Back in the day, maybe say early, mid-2000s, I used to work for GameStop, and it was like, you should have pre-ordered it. You should have pre-ordered it, and then we would have it. But you didn't pre-order it. And now you can't even do that. And now that. it's like, well, you should have pre-ordered it like within a minute. two hours or <laughs> yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. Two within hours minutes of being it coming. generous. Yeah, two hours of being generous. generous. Yeah. But yeah, you should have, you should have pre-ordered it as soon as it was announced because yeah. we've run out of stock. And it's, a limited, it's literally a limited item. Yes. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And look... I, it's become a market for people to run these bots and to just buy up anything collectors and resell it on eBay. And like, look, I'm not hating the player. 
But scalpers can should be hated though. <laughs> well, when, when, when they when they mark up the product beyond, the, I hate them when they brag about it. That's when I think you should hate them because then they're just throwing it in people's faces. Mm. But it's on the company to find a fair way to sell these things to actual collectors. Yes. If a scalper wants to buy it, only let him buy one. They're buying like ten of them at a time. Something crazy. Because what they do is they run these scripts, and they input multiple credit cards hmm. with with different names or different address so they don't get caught. They'll like they'll send it to their family and friends. Yes. One item drops. <laughs> they run the script. It goes to the site and it buys up ten of them in a loop with ten different credit cards. That's hmm. how they do it. There you go. That's yeah. how. It, that, the, there you go. Now you can do it yourself. So thanks, thanks, Gio. No. Showing the world. But I'm going to give a solution because I'm a programmer here. (laughs) Companies, do not um, do do your queue system client side. Do it server side. Then nobody can hack the server if it's a well-secured server. Nobody can alter the JavaScript and run these scripts. I have spoken. (laughs) All right? And if you're a developer out there and you hate this, Make a server-side solution, uh, put it up on uh, NPM packages, mm. let anyone download it, bam, solved. Because on the server-side, it's much harder to hack. You heard so it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Moving on. You could tell it's bothered me to the point oh, where I started thinking of a solution. Yeah, exactly. This, yeah. Did you have anything else to add about the PS5? And the oh, AM- yeah. So, um, yeah, let me pull this up real quick. So, basically, what AMD is saying is that because the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are going to use the same chips, mm. it's saying that they're both going to get the supply that they need, and that's how it's kind of indirectly confirming that, that they're both 2020? coming out 2020. Yes. Gotcha. So that's the whole point of this article. It's just saying, hey, look, both. But but also that's good because if they're we talked about the Series X last week, yes, and how Sony really needs to come back and give an answer to the Series X. Because right now, the Series X is looking great. And Sony... They're not in a rush. They're not in a rush. They don't have to necessarily. Especially since, you know, with the Xbox One, how it was unveiled and how they butchered that unveiling, forcing Connect, forcing Always Online, taking away used game abilities. Like, Sony... But Xbox the, pick, screwed themselves over by oh, doing yeah, that. Oh, yeah, no, no, they did. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, like Sony's sitting pretty. Yeah, They're they doing well, and they, they can still chill out and wait. They yeah. still they have the games. They have the player base. And that's what we talked about is actually the most important thing, the titles. And every week, I look at the new releases mm-hmm. for PS4 and Xbox. <sighs> Xbox is always hurting, for yeah. the most part. They're mm-hmm. always hurting. I mean... Th- like I uh, like I say, in terms of third party games, it's always going to be best, in my opinion, on the Xbox. They tend to play better on the Xbox because the Xbox has more power. Yeah. I'm talking about the C, uh, the One X versus the PS4 Pro, and, and it's and, easier to port for because of the infrastructure that they have. It's exactly. Easier to port for. One good example, yeah. most recent example, is the Vanquish slash uh, Bayonetta port. Yeah. Just the, that just happened. The 10th anniversary, and then. But if you only own one, yeah, I'd, I'm not surprised that you own a PS4 yeah. over an Xbox. Yeah. Because you do get those third-party games, and you get those first-party games that are amazing. Yes. Yeah, we're going to about talk talk about one right now. Yeah, so uh, let's um, pull this up. So first of all, really quickly, uh, Tech Inter- uh, World Tour announced that they're canceling uh, many, mm. many events because of COVID-19. Mm. Uh, there's a shocker there. Uh, I'm surprised. Obviously, this sucks, but that's how it is. Yeah, be, um, sa- be, be safe and sorry. Be safe. Uh, uh, so another thing, um, Valorant. Um, Going to talk about this because mm. I follow this. So Riot Games, the creator of League of Legends. Yes. They're launching their own first-person shooter. They put out a trailer this week. Um, it looks stylish. It looks nice. Do you, but, play, do you want to play some video? No? Uh, no. Well, I'll just say this. It looks like a mix between Counter-Strike and Overwatch. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't do either of them. It doesn't look like it does either of them well. 
Ouch. So, when does the demo drop? I, <laughs> I think they're picking a really dangerous middle ground here where they're not really catered. They're trying to start a new genre. Okay. And with first person shooters, that's really risky. So, I'm, I, it looked nice, but it, it just didn't like stand out to me as something that I would enjoy. So, okay. Okay. Um, well, why, why is that? Why, why, why don't you think you would enjoy it? Because it doesn't have the dynamic, over the top, uh, like uh, moves and stuff like Overwatch. Mm. That kind of makes it like a Street Fighter type thing where you're doing supers and all this stuff. Gotcha. Interesting characters. Yeah, and it doesn't have the precise tactical precision of Counter, of Counter Strike. Yeah, so it's somewhere in the middle. It's kind of middling. Yeah, jack yeah. of all trades, master of none. Exactly. Okay. So I think. Um, yeah, it might not <laughs> do so well. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Um, so next up, uh, we're, let's uh, briefly discuss uh, Ghost of Tsushi Tsushima. They released a story <laughs> Ghost trailer. Ghost of Sushi, that's it. Yeah, Ghost it's of It's like you had Tsushima. really bad sushi, you died. And you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, they released a story trailer. So uh, tell me about what you thought about that. Uh, I think it looks in effing incredible oh yeah. my god first of all the trailer was uh, we were all questioning when where, where it's going to appear in it looks amazing and it's it, it was all playing on the ps4 pro yeah <laughs> all right so um yeah so the game i mean it looked beautiful yes yeah so i mean what do you think about it I'm I'm excited for it. I am a sucker for feudal J Japan type uh, stories and games. Like I'm really excited for Neo Two coming up soon. Yeah, I love Neo One. We both love Onimusha. Yeah. Uh, so you know more more games, more well made games in this time frame better in my opinion. Yeah. And um, I believe oh snap, who's developing this? I forget. It's not. Uh, is it Sucker Punch? Let me pull it. Or up is it Insomniac? Quick. Uh, do, do, do. oh man sucker punch right sucker, there okay. sucker punch and sucker punch they make great action games they did uh the infamous series oh yeah i actually i i thought that was a fun game yeah no no they're they are, they are fun they're really yeah. cool uh, but uh i am i this game looks incredible i still want to know how gameplay works yeah uh they they showed like you know that one stealth run yeah um, and then just the fluidity of cutscene moving into gameplay, it's done even more seamless here, yeah. especially with all the variables that are going around. Like uh, in that one initial trailer, when he was walking outside and like these leaves are on fire mm -hmm. and it's like, it's a cutscene that's happening and then it just goes seamlessly into the actual fight. And yeah. Like, what, what, what's going on? Wait, what? <laughs> we're, we're not in a cutscene. Yeah. That, that part was very strange. Uh, in a way, but it was cool. No, it was beautiful. Um, I already pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered the collector's edition because okay. I'm a sucker like that. Yeah, sucker punch. <laughs> um, so how about uh, you? Yeah, so I'm not. I don't know. I don't know because I feel like with games like Neo mm. and um, you know they just remastered uh, Oni Musha Warlords and um, which I mean, what about the rest of those games? Come on, Capcom. Yeah, I loved Onimusha too, but Onimusha: Dawn of Dreams—that's where it's at. Yeah, that game was awesome. Yeah. Um, but I I feel like uh, this one. Mm. I don't know why it just—it's not grabbing you. Yeah, it's not grabbing me. It looks beautiful. It looks. Uh, why is it not grabbing you? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I looked up the game, mm. and it's supposed to be an action uh, adventure slash stealth game yeah. Yeah. yeah um so i mean going back 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 in time i was a huge fan of tenchu <sighs> tenchu wrath of heaven man yeah oh my god yeah. i loved that game yeah i was a huge fan of uh tenchu uh, mm. stealth assassin and um so i don't know why it's not grabbing me maybe because they're not focused on the gameplay in the trailers they're focused more on the, on the beauty of the world, the story, the cinematics. Mm -hmm. I think if they put out a really cool gameplay trailer showing uh, like a bunch of different things that you can do, mm. and it looks like Tenchu, that'll <laughs> that's what will grab me. That is what will grab me. Okay, poisoned rice. <laughs> you you know that um, what's it called? That Sekiro was actually supposed to be a Tenchu game. 
Yeah. And, and then, then it was so different that they were like, no, it should be its own thing. Yeah, and it yeah. became Sekiro. And that's what drew me to Sekiro. Yeah. Was that when I saw it, I was like, yo, this is like Tenchu, uh, but totally different game. Mm-hmm. And a million times harder. <laughs> <laughs> Not a million times. Tenchu was still hard. Yes, but no, yeah, no, yeah. no. But no, nowhere near as hard as no Sekiro. Nowhere near hard. Yeah, as Sekiro hard is Sekiro. impossible. I'm yeah. kidding. No, <laughs> Damn you, Madam Butterfly. Or Lady, Lady Butterfly. Lady, Lady Butterfly. Butterfly. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's it for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let us know what you thought about the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think it should be in all like multi parts, or it should have been all in one game? Yeah, yeah, and and let us know which uh, console you're looking forward to more: the Xbox Series X or, or the, the PS5. PS5. Yeah, and um, or just stick to the Switch. <laughs> yeah, just stick to the Switch because that's I, I don't know. We don't know what they're gonna do, but fair. I think they're gonna do something. Yes. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in, and we'll see you all next week. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of Games I Speak. What did you think of the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo? Leave a comment below and we'll see you all next time.